there's a time constraint within a master's program because you only have a year and a half, maybe two years as the maximum, right? You can't be pushing into three, four years. It just becomes not competitive. Mm -hmm. And then also you have this main focus, this main goal, which is how do we take students? How do we prepare them? And how do we place them into the industry? And I think you can break that down into two core parts here, which is going to be one, education, which you're talking about, the core fundamentals of quantitative finance, risk management, looking at along those a long time. And then also you have the soft skills side, which is job placement, interviewing skills, uh, communication skills. And I think we're coming back to that key crux of the whole problem of these programs in general, which is how, how do you fit all of this in into a very short period of time? And then how do we layer in now data science, machine learning, you know, cryptocurrencies, everyone's trying to grapple with how do you add all this to the, the curriculum? And yet it's so challenging to get all that in there and prepared, especially when you see programs that are like a year, which I have no idea how they're going to do that. But after graduation, I remember feeling like I was so overwhelmed. And as one of the graduates told me, you know, it's kind of like drinking from a fire hose. You go to <laughs> hot programs and it's like they're just dumping, you know, stochastic calculus and uh, like risk management, you know, metrics. And now you got data science coming in and statistics and it's all coming at you when you graduate. And I felt like I was so underprepared. And yet there's really I've been in the career, career now for like almost eight years. There's an infinite amount to know even going forward. Well, I'd say um, regarding the time constraint, I mean, one point is, you know, you give a man a fish and uh, versus teach a man to fish and there's a very big difference, right? <laughs> so, yeah. um, so, I mean, I think there's I mean, some truth to that, that try to more or less convey a mode of operation that people will be in for the rest of their working careers, which will include, you know, self-educating, it has to. But, you know, to a deeper degree, maybe learning the mode of thinking, you know, so, you know, sort of, let's say, being suspicious if someone's offering you a free lunch or something like that, you know, so, so, um, and, um, you know, let's say, a lot of subtlety, let's say, so, so, um, you know, just because let's say something worked in the past, you know, is no guarantee to work in the future, and you really got to understand what that means, it could mean survivorship bias, in some ways, that's why I really do favor having a lot of practitioners doing the teaching, because let's say, um, even if they're not as attuned to what's going on in academia, they're, they're very attuned to, let's say, the shortcomings of standard thinking. Mm -hmm. so, um, so at least they can convey the skepticism <laughs> that's necessary. Okay, so, uh, so that, you know, because if you let's say when you're coming into a field not knowing anything and you know there are these highly respected professors talking to you i mean it is natural to think that everything they're saying is god's gospel and um you know only to to find out like sometimes what you're taught is really just you know canon in academia and not really widely used in industry in designing a curriculum or more broadly a program it's more a philosophy than you know a concrete set of, of rules and um you know the curriculum it's and program are itself going to have to evolve uh with the times so so just making sure you're not insulated is is part of the battle so um you know but and that can happen okay by bringing in practitioners to teach but even if that's not so easy by doing like what you're doing now reaching out to as you do to um to people and um you know, nowadays with, with Zoom, it's it's a lot easier than it used to be. I would tend to agree that they should probably be a little bit longer than they could be in the past because of a wider variety of subjects that are current. Mm -hmm. And um, so, um, you know, as you bring in the things you mentioned, it's hard to drop some of the more traditional subjects because um, actually the people doing the interviewing are probably more familiar with the traditional subjects and the new ones. And so are probably just going to ask what they know rather than what they don't know. And so, um, so you, you know, let's say it, it does, it does mean that students are going to have to, let's say work hard, but, and also, I mean, what we do is, although we formally start in September, we have a boot camp the summer before. And I think a lot of programs are doing that now. Yeah. And, um, so it's kind of a way of lengthening it if you think about it. 